Hi there, I'm Black Riot broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. First time you're passing through, you can always subscribe, like and share. If you don't know how to subscribe, you just click on the red writing to subscribe. And then you can get a lot of my channels. And the thing is, is that I talk about different things. So different things appeal to different people. Today I wanted to talk about um, whether or not you would lie on your CV and whether or not you think it is important what you write is the truth. I mean, if you haven't had a job for years and years and years, not if you haven't had a job for years, but if you had a job years and years back, who the hell's gonna check? Some of those companies have gone out of business. You can't even get in touch with them. So why not tell a little white lie on your CV? Just to get the job that you want. Really and truly, with a lot of jobs, you have to be trained anyway. So why not? Just put, oh, I've got this degree, I've got um, this qualification, I used to work at that place, but it's closed down now. Who's going to know? Who's checking? When you go to these HR departments, they take your word for it. The reason why I brought this up is because a senior manager in the NHS, his name is Peter Knight. He falsely acclaimed, he fal falsely claimed to have a classics degree. And because he claimed to have a classics degree, they offered him £260,000 a year. He put classics degree on his certificate, on his CV. They didn't check it. He went through HR. And the funny thing is, the higher the degree, the less likely they are going to ask you to prove it, which seems to have happened. Now with the NHS, which is where he worked, every now and then they do an audit. They audit the personnel files to make sure everything is as it should be. So these counter fraud investigators, I don't know what tipped them off, went and checked this guy's file, went and checked this guy's file, found out that the certificate wasn't on it. Now, the only thing I can think of, because it wasn't a requirement for the job, I don't even know why he put it on the CV, not unless he puts it on all his CVs and just didn't, you know, it didn't matter whether they wanted it or not. But it wasn't a requirement for the job. But because it's on the CV, you are supposed to have a copy of that certificate on file, a certified copy. There was no copy of that certificate on file, but I've got a funny feeling he must have been messing up in the job and they must have asked him if he doesn't know this and he doesn't know that, are we sure he's qualified? And at that point, they must have asked him to produce the certificate because it's really easy, well, not easy to get in the NHS. You do have to go through a lot of... Um, tests and presentations and stuff but once you're in it's hard to get you out so he must have been ballsing it up for nearly a year and it took them nearly a year to get him out so he defrauded them out of all that money and guess what he got suspended sentence for two years 200 hours um he's got to work unpaid i mean can you imagine if that was someone else what they would get there was also something else that he got. Oh yeah, 30 days rehabilitation. Apparently his wife's left him. They've lost the home. So I don't know whether, because he got the job, he got a big home, you know, like a lot of people, once they get more money, they decide, oh yeah, I'm going to up the ladder. You know, I'm going to get in with the top echelon. And then when they lose the job, they're flat on their faces, which seems to have happened. I don't know if the wife left him because of this, which to me is, is supposed to stay for the good and the bad, mate. So I don't know if it's because of that or whether it's because he lied to her or whether it's because she didn't know or whether it's because um, because of the lie they've lost everything. I don't know. But apparently because he lost his wife and he lost his home, that's why they were lenient with him with the conviction. But it does make you think, though, doesn't it? Because when you go for a job, when you're, when you're crafting your CV, 
I've often thought about that because someone of my age, a lot of the um, jobs that I went to, like my first job was when I was 16. It was this place called International Life Insurance. It was in Wembley. It was my first job. That's not there now. So even though if I was to put that on my certificate, there's no one to prove that I work there. There's no one to prove that I work for the solicitors I work for in Kilburn. There's no way anybody can prove that I work for Courtney Wines where I worked. So all of these companies that I worked for and I had experience from, there's no proof. I think now though, they kind of ask for jobs um, over the last 10 to 15 years. I don't think they want you to go back that far. But sometimes they do ask you for your schools, and that can be going back a bit. But all I'm saying is that it's very easy to put stuff on there and not have it evidenced and, you know, have the luck of the draw, be able to get a job, say, OK, I'm an... Well, you can't really say you're an IT technician because they would expect you to know. But when I went for my first um, legal secretarial job, I knew nothing about legal work nothing about it. I'd done secretarial work, but I'd never done legal work. And I remember going to this agency and they said, well, we've got a legal secretary for you. And I'm thinking to myself, boy, I don't know nothing about that. Anyway, I showed up and they said, oh, um, you're going to have to um, do this and use audio. I'd never used audio before. I, I'm a very good speller. So that's okay. I'm very good at that. So that kind of, you know, um, what they call it, checks and balances. But I went into that job and I just said to that lady, look, you know, I, the way I worked before, it was a different field. Like, I think this was specialising in wills and probate and where I was working before it was conveyancing or something. So I just need to be familiar with the terms. And if you could just show me how this machine works, you know. But there again, I hadn't said I could do the legal work. Not I? Anyway, my point is, is that you can, if you've got common sense and you're a quick learner, you can bluff your way into a job. It might be a little bit more difficult now. They're looking for immigrants and they're looking for all this stuff to prevent people from getting into jobs. But there's nothing because most people that come into jobs have to learn, have to be trained. And if, like I said, if you're a quick learner and you can pick up quickly, there's nothing to stop you. I'm not telling you to lie on your CV, but when you think about that guy landing 260 grand for saying he had a classics degree, I mean, I could, what could I say? What kind of degree could I say I had? Well, I can't say law degree, because then they'd be asking me stuff about law, but I don't know. That's what I'm saying. He must have got caught out somehow. They must have asked him a question that he should have known, and he didn't know it. So I just thought, um, yeah, when, they, when you're putting down um, now, I know that if you go for a job in the NHS, they do want to see original copies of all the qualifications that you state. That's why I'm thinking that HR office must have been negligent. He must have said, oh, I'll bring it in. And you know, like when you've got these big organisations, things just slip through the net. You know, they don't follow up and then they think it's less important. And if he's doing his job well, they're like, ah, oh, you know, I'll follow up later or whatever. Yes, I reckon he must have made a big cock up. Um, counter fraud investigators found um, the certificates were not on file but like I said it must have been poor performance that tipped him off um, yeah and I think that is it so peeps you know nothing to stop you getting the job of your dreams you just have to know how to pull it off <laughs> I shouldn't really be encouraging you to do that but I'm just saying a little bit of common sense that's all it takes. Bye-bye.